JB and we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Increased rainfall expected across Jamaica says Met Office. The Met Office is advising that the country is set to see an increase in rainfall over the next few days, starting on Sunday. The agency says a broad area of disturbed weather, currently across the southwestern Caribbean Sea, is expected to develop into an area of low pressure by Saturday afternoon. The system is forecast to move slowly northward, then northwestward over the next few days, and to be in the vicinity of Jamaica by Sunday night. Regardless of development, the Met Office says the area of low pressure seems increasingly likely to bring unstable weather to Jamaica beginning Sunday night through to Wednesday evening. Consequently, the forecast is of cloudy conditions with periods of showers and thunderstorms which may be heavy at times and the strong gusty winds to affect sections of most parishes, especially eastern and south-central parishes during this period. Fishers and other marine interests should exercise extreme caution as sea conditions will deteriorate in the vicinity of showers, thunderstorms, and the strong gusty winds. This area of disturbed weather currently has a 30% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone over the next 48 hours, and the Met Service says it will be closely monitoring this system for further development. Woman shot while walking home from work in Linstead. The Linstead police in St. Catherine are searching for assailants who shot a woman who was walking home from work. The gun attack happened at about 6.50 p.m. on Friday. It's reported that she was walking along Baseda Lane in Linstead when she was sponsored upon by gunmen. The injured 22-year-old call center representative was assisted to hospital for treatment. Choke driver fatally shot. Choke laden with chicken stolen in Spanish town. Police on the hunt for criminals who was shot and killed a truck driver before making off with a truck loaded with chickens in a violent robbery on Friday night. The deceased has been identified as 30-year-old Rayshon Dallas, also known as Jordan, of March Pen Road in Spanish Town. According to police reports, Dallas was transporting a truck filled with chickens to Nesbury Grove at around 10.30 p.m. There, he was ambushed by armed men who held him up, opened fire, and fled with the truck. Dallas was rushed to the Spanish Town Hospital, but despite efforts to save him, he was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. The Spanish Town Criminal Investigation Branch has launched an investigation into the incident. Son shot dead, mother injured in gun attack in St. Mary. Tragedy struck in the quiet community of Ito Burrell near Dry River Bridge on Friday afternoon. A lone masked gunman stormed a home, leaving a young man dead and his mother severely injured. That is Marvin Wilson, otherwise called Ricky J, a 23-year-old electrician from Enfield. According to police reports, Wills was on the veranda with his mother and other family members at around 3.40 p.m. when the gunman entered from the back of the house, opening fire on the group. Wills reportedly attempted to escape by running inside the house, but the gunman pursued him, fatally shooting him multiple times. In the violent exchange, Wills's mother was struck in the left foot, losing five toes as a result. She was rushed to the Anata Bay Hospital, where she is receiving treatment for her injuries. Meanwhile, Wills was pronounced dead at the scene. The St. Mary Criminal Investigation Bureau has launched an investigation into the attack, although no motive has yet been determined. Authorities are actively pursuing leads, with acting superintendent for the parish, Anthony Wallace, acknowledging the rising concern of a violent crime in Anata Bay. Anata Bay has become a hotspot for crime, said Wallace. The police will maintain a strong presence in the area to reassure residents of the commitment to maintain peace and security. Turks and Caicos pilot fined after pleading guilty to ganja charges in Kingston. A pilot from the Turks and Caicos Islands was fined after pleading guilty to ganja possession charges in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on Friday. The pilot, 37-year-old Kenardo Thomas, was charged last year after parcels of ganja were found in his suitcase at the Norman Manley International Airport. Thomas was fined $15,000 for possession of ganja and an additional $260,307 for attempting to export ganja. He faced the court represented by King's Counsel Peter Champagny and attorney lawyer Samuel Campbell, who urged the parish judge for leniency. Following their plea, charges of conspiracy to export ganja and dealing in ganja were dismissed. The incident, which occurred in April of last year, saw Thomas preparing to board an airplane who was scheduled to fly when airport security discovered 18 pounds of ganja in his suitcase. Despite his occupation, his legal team successfully argued that he was not a flight risk, securing him bail in May 2023 for $2 million with surety. 
JC raised his rank permitted to authorize motor vehicle seizure to inspector. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF, as well as a level for authorizing the seizure of motor vehicles from sergeant to inspector. This is according to the updated force orders and is intended to increase accountability, reduce misuse of authority, and ensure that the actions taken are justified and based on careful review of all circumstances. According to the force orders, there are currently many instances where motor vehicles are seized by the police without due care for the risk to persons on property. However, it noted that the seizure of vehicles under the Road Traffic Act is not mandatory. Based on Section 13 of the Road Traffic Act 2018, vehicles are liable to be seized or being unlicensed, having no decal, having no registration plates affixed, registration plates obscured, and operating without the requisite license. The force orders that the issue of traffic tickets for these breaches can suffice. Therefore, according to the orders, ranks authorizing seizures are to examine each case on its own merit and exercise discretion accordingly. Therefore, according to the orders, ranks authorizing seizures are to examine each case on its own merit and exercise discretion accordingly. It added that when a decision is made for seizure, the exposure of persons, property, and businesses to a serious harm or loss must be considered. Some of these circumstances include the seizure of private or public motor vehicles for being unlicensed when young children and babies are aboard, the seizure of a vehicle that is sealed with perishable goods for not having a commercial license, seizure of a vehicle for being unlicensed during a weekend or before 12 midday on a Monday, when persons are heading to work and intend to have their vehicles licensed, and seizure of commercial vehicles for obscured registration plates, especially entities and their contractors, providing critical services, including lighting and cable. Whenever vehicles are being seized, only approved working companies must be engaged through the Police Emergency Communication Center at the rates approved by the Transport Authority. Record rates are as follows. Tow within a 5-kilometer radius, motor car, $12,000. Coasters and highest buses, $22,500. Tow over 5-kilometer radius, motor car, $600 per kilometer. Coasters and highest buses, $800 per kilometer. No key towing. Motor car, $4,500. Coasters and highest buses, $6,000. Brownberg suggests politics block in progress to repair Oakland Crescent. Member of Parliament for Southwest St. Andrew, Dr. Angela Brownberg, is suggesting politics has led to the Oakland Crescent Road when her constituency being ignored. She's demanded that taxpayer dollars be spent in a fair and equitable manner. Oakland Crescent has been in dire need of a complete overhaul for far too long. Initially, it was recommended for inclusion in a $40 million road patching program, but was disqualified due to the severe level of rehabilitation it requires. After numerous consultations, it was clear from the residents and community members alike that Oakland Crescent should be our top priority for road repairs. I therefore made sure it was listed as the top priority. However, since the spark consultations in June of this year and despite follow-ups, I have received no further communication regarding approval or even a timeline for when work will begin. The issue came to public attention. After a video showing the poor state of the road began circulating online, the residents expressed their frustration saying the road resembles a riverbed with potholes. Dr. Brownberg said the road has been recommended for inclusion in the government's ongoing road repair program. I understand the growing frustration of residents who must navigate worsening conditions, particularly during each rainfall that only makes things worse. While I see road work progressing in other constituencies led by government officials, there has been a complete lack of transparency when it comes to Southwest St. Andrew. Let me be clear. These are taxpayer dollars and we will continue to demand that Oakland Crescent and all critical infrastructure in our constituency receive the attention and action it deserves. I will not relent until Southwest St. Andrew receives fair and Meanwhile, at least one resident of Oakland Crescent says the road has not been properly fixed since at least 2007. No sir, this is not a road. This is no road. This is not gully and this is not road. Because we have to switch on a pass, not even the sidewalk are real. Punk in grow. We don't know where not, we don't know. We can't even drive a car on the road. We have to take the next road. This is not no road. When in a 2007, Porsche them dropped them mall. Mm -hmm. Because labor right wing then take up back the mall and labor right fix the road. 
Labor right fixed it from 2007 and I don't remember it fixing again from that time. Maybe fix again from that time, but not from 2007. That's what I remember. I $700 for tip one, tip one shoes, you know. And every week when I go to church in you know, one um, eels, I have to tip it. The shoes I can write up, I have to tip it. And that's no fear. One road, one justice. Angela Brownberg, you need to come out now. <laughs> JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.